How's everybody doing? Hi, hi, hi. How's everybody doing? All right, that's, that's a little better, a little better. Give the obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life, to President Canna. Thank you again, sir, for this tremendous opportunity that you have extended to me to be a part of this Spiritual Emphasis Week uh, here at Truett McConnell uh, College. I was here last year for one day, and uh, uh, I'm invited back again this year. It's such an honor to be here and to just spend time with your president. I love that can. I love the, what God has done in his life and in his ministry, and I just thank the Lord this when he and I have those times to talk and share, as we did on last night over dinner, just to hear all the great things that God is doing, not only in his life and in his family, life and in the life of this college. Uh, when, when I mentioned Truett McConnell, he, he just beams up, his eyes get big, and all the things that God has done here. He's so proud of what God is doing in the life of this faculty and staff, and particularly in the life of the students. And what amazes me about this man is that as we're driving back and forth, like this morning we was coming here and yesterday, and he would just, uh, 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 I would just man, say, man, that's a big dude over there. I say, yeah, that's such and such. From the, if He knows where everybody's name, where everybody's from. And I said, man, how do you do that. I did, just a great heart, great. Let's give the Lord a hand for your president. Amen. Great man, such a great personality. Amen. And I, I, I like the new haircut, but I like that. I like that. Amen. I, I hardly recognized him yesterday when I came to his office and said, who is this man? Amen. But uh, it looks, looks good. I thank God for you. To all the faculty, to the staff, to all the students, thank you so very much for your hospitality, for your prayers uh, for me and uh, for our church and our city down in New Orleans and just continues to lift us up uh, in the Lord. Also, one of the trustees are here, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Dr. Robbie Foster. Where are you, brother? Just wave your hand. Amen. Uh, uh, hey, back in the back of the life of and some of the folk from his uh, church. He has a son that attends here. Josh attends a school here. I'll be preaching tonight at a Hopewell Baptist Church in Gainesville. Amen. Right up the road. Uh, if you don't have anything to do tonight, come on, join us down there at Hopewell. I tell you, uh, you listen, you think the, the, the praise team and band is, is good here. You ought to check out the music ministry of Hopewell. I tell you, you'll be blessed and just pray with us and for us. We cannot make it tonight. Just continue to lift us up in your prayer. Robbie, good to see you, Lauren. Good to see the folk from uh, Hopewell uh, here in the service on today. Turn the Bible this morning to the book of Philippians chapter 2 as we share today in the Word of God. The book of Philippians chapter 2. This is Spiritual Emphasis Week, and as I mentioned on yesterday, uh, every day I'll be challenging you as, uh, as students, as uh, husbands, as wives, as singles, as staff, as uh, believers, that we should emphasize what God wants to do in our lives spiritually. That's the theme, Spiritual Emphasis Week. So every day I'll be challenging you in the Word of God to do what God uh, has called us to do. God saved us so that we will be lights in a dark world and so in a low sodium saltless society. I believe in victorious living. I believe that God uh, 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 did not just save us to give us fire insurance from hell. I believe God saved us to make an impact on this society. And in order to do that, we've got to know that who, we got to know who we are and got to know whose we are. That's why the message on yesterday from Psalms 119 entitled Victory Through the Word, we encourage you to understand that you and I as sons and daughters of God can have victory through the Word of God. But you must have the Word of God in your hand must have the word of God in your head, and you must have the word of God in your heart. The psalmist said, how can I, read a, 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 how can I not sin against it by taking heed to the word of God? I believe that God has empowered every last one of us who are born again with all that we need through his word to live a victorious life. So if God has given us all that we need to live a victorious life, why is it that we're not living victoriously? If God has given to us, as his sons and daughters. If God has given to us as believers all that we need, the word in our hand, our head, and our heart, to live a victorious life, why is it that so many saints of God are falling? Why is it that so many of us are not living the life that God has described and desires for us to live? Well, let me suggest, my brothers and sisters, part of that reason is many of us make bad decisions in life when it comes to those things in life where the enemy, where we know God's will for our life, but then the enemy comes along and gives us a tempting alternative, and then we're faced with a decision of which way to choose. And many of us, make bad decisions as a result of that. So I want to challenge you this morning in your decision process when you are 
faced with those decisions, when you when the, you know what the Lord is telling you to do, but the enemy will come along with a tempting alternative, how you can be able to make sure that you're standing and doing the will of God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8 of that chapter. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8 of that chapter. If you have it, please say amen. amen. You'll find these similar words. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Our Father and our God, Master, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful and exciting privilege to be back here at Church Picano College. Thank you for Dr. Cannon. Thank you for the invitation that he has extended to me. Thank you for the faculty, the staff, the students, God. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Now, God, as we prepare for this secondary spiritual emphasis week, we thank you for the band. Thank you for the praise team. Thank you how they have blessed us, God, in song, God, so that we can sense the presence of God in this place. Now, God, I pray that you'll use this word, God, to touch hearts, to touch minds, to touch spirits, God. I pray, God, that you would give to us, God, what we need to call to pull off this thing called victorious living. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. Now, God, as always, hide me behind the cross. Let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and our sinners will come to repentance. Therefore, God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. I'll be so very careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and for us say, again, let the people of God say amen. amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. With that text in mind, I want to preach this morning from the subject, the importance of having a renewed mind. The importance of having a renewed mind. My brothers and my sisters, there's not an hour that goes by. There's not a day that goes by. There's not a week that goes by. There's not a month that goes by in the life of a believer, in the life of a child of God, in the life of a born-again Christian where your mind is not being tempted. Where your mind is not being enticed. Where your mind is not being lured by our enemy, by our adversary, by our tormentor, by Satan, by the devil, by Lucifer. Now, again, not an hour that goes by. Now, not, not a day goes by. Not a week goes by. Not a month goes by where you as a child of God and me, where our mind is not being tempted, our mind is not being enticed or lured by our enemy. Whether there's something you watch it on TV, Georgia Shore Snooky in the situation. Y'all do know about Jersey Shores, Luke and Sigurd. Uh, or whether it's something, I see that hand, thank you, bro. Or whether it's something you're watching on TV, or something you're watching at the movies, or, or something you're watching on TV, or just something you're looking at on the internet. There's not a day or hour or that goes by that your mind is not being tempted by something you're watching on TV, something you watch at the movies, something you look at on the internet, something you talk about with other people. Our, our mind is not being attacked by the enemy. That's why Peter admonishes us as believers. That's why Peter warns warns us as believers. That's why Peter alerts us as believers. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 80 says, be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a royal lion, uh, walking about seeking uh, whom he may devour, seeking whom he may destroy, seeking whom he may defeat. Not an hour goes by, Dr. Cannon. Not a day goes by. Not a week goes by. Not a month that goes by where our enemy, where our adversary, where our tormentor, Josh, has not put in the mind uh, of a born-again believer, has not put in the mind, Gary, of a child of God, has not put in the mind of a believer. Something we know we should not do but uh, something we know we should not watch but some stuff we know we should not say but places we know we should not go but before the 60 minutes of that hour has passed, before the 24 hours of that day has passed, before the seven days of that week has passed, before the four weeks of that month has passed, somewhere, somehow, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves seduced by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves enticed by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves lured by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves bamboozled by the enemy. And since I'm talking to a lot of young people today, somewhere we find ourselves popped by the enemy. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, one thing that Canada I've discovered, 
One thing that I realized, ladies and gentlemen, one thing that I've seen is that none of us are exempt from the tactics of the enemy. From the pulpit to the door, from the choir stand to the floor, none of us are exempt from the attacks of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the schemes of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the temptations of the enemy. From the president of the college, to the staff of the college, to the faculty of the college, to the teachers of the college, to the students of the college, to those who work in the cafeteria, or those who work on the grounds. None of us are exempt from the tactics of the enemy. It does not matter out of your marital status. You can be single, saved, uh, and satisfied. You are not exempt. Uh, it doesn't matter your marriage. You can be married and marvelous or married and miserable. Take your choice. Take your choice. Uh, you are not exempt from the enemy. You can be widowed and wonderful. You are not exempt from the enemy. It doesn't matter your position in the church. Uh, you can be a praying preacher, an engaging elder, a devoted deacon, a terrific trustee, a committed choir member, a magnificent musician, a useful usher, a gracious greeter, a marvelous member. It does not matter your position in the church. You're not exempt from the tactics of the enemy. It does not matter your marital status. It does not matter your position in the church. It does not even matter your age. You can be a cute child, a tender teenager, in your tempting 20s, your tantalizing 30s, your firm 40s, your fabulous 50s. Your soaring sisters, your serene sevenists, your elegant 80s, or your nostalgic 90s, it does not matter your age. You are not exempt. It does not matter your marital status. It does not matter your position in the church. It does not matter your age. It does not matter your race. It does not matter your education. It does not matter your vocation. You are not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. It does not matter how long you've been in church. It does not matter how long you've been baptized. It does not matter how long you've been saved. Whether you're a PK or not a PK, you are not exempt from the attacks of the of the enemy. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, all I'm trying to say during this spiritual emphasis week is that the fact of the matter is that the enemy will do all he can uh, to attack the mind uh, of the sons and daughters of God. Uh, Satan will do all he can to attack the minds of those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ. Don't just take my word for it. Search the scriptures uh, for yourself. Think about it. Check it out. Satan got to the mind of Adam and Eve uh, and they ate of the forbidden fruit. Satan got to the mind of Abraham and Sarah, and they lied about their marital status. Satan got to the mind of Cain, uh, and he murdered his own brother, Abel. Satan got to the mind of Noah, and he got drunk and naked in front of his kids. Uh, Satan got to the mind of Jacob, and he deceived his own daddy, Isaac. Satan got to the mind of David, and he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Yes, yeah, baby, yes, she had a brick out. Yes, she was fine. Yes, she backed it up and shake it fast and pop lock it and drop it. Yeah, but David, oh, y'all oh, know about that. All right, y'all got that. I was, I was just wondering if I was still in the crowd, still in the crowd. Satan got to the mind of Amnon, uh, and he raped his own sister Tamar. Satan got to the mind of Judas, and he betrayed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Satan got to the mind of Peter, and he denied that he knew Jesus as Savior. Satan got to the mind of the prodigal son, and the Bible said he wasted his inheritance on wild parties and hoochie mamas. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought I was at my own church. I can say who's your mama's at you, but I'm at Truett McConnell College. Uh, a wild parties and riotous living, all right? That's better. <laughs> The Bible goes on and on and on, Dr. Cannon, and our enemy, ladies and gentlemen, didn't stop in the Bible. Our enemies, uh, Dr. Father, didn't stop in the scripture. Sitting right here in the British church, sitting right here in this chapel service, sitting right here on your pew, on your left or on your right, sitting somebody right in front of you, right beside you are men and women, husbands and wives, singles and seniors, teenagers and teachers, members and guests, college students, pastors and preachers whose mind has been attacked by the enemy, whose mind has been enticed by the enemy, whose mind has been seduced by the enemy, whose mind has been lured by the enemy, whose mind has been bamboozled by the enemy. Right here in this chapel, a people whose mind has been tempted by the enemy. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, the question of the hour is, how can we as sons and daughters of God, how can we as young men and young women that, that hope to uh, have a ministry in, the, in our future want to live for God, uh, how can we as believers stand uh, 
in the midst of the attacks of the enemy. How can you as sons and daughters of God uh, win against the seductions of the enemy? How can we be victorious against these temptations? Well, my brothers and my sisters, the answer is you must. It's imperative. It's critical. You must have uh, a renewed mind. Hence the subject of the sermon this morning, the importance of having a renewed mind. And that's the point that the Apostle Paul that can is making in the text this morning. Uh, he's making to the church at Philippi. He's saying, listen, he's stating to every one of them, listen, he's saying, if you guys are going to pull this off, ladies, if y'all going to win this thing, brothers, if y'all going to be victorious, in your, if, if, if a believer is going to be victorious, if you're going to be able to stand, if you're going to be able to be faithful in your walk with God, then you must have a, a renewed mind. Therefore, I want every believer to understand the importance of having a renewed mind. There are three things I want you to see in the text real quickly this morning, uh, how important it is to have a renewed mind. First of all, a renewed mind helps you think about your Christ. A renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. Look at verses 5 and 6 of Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. The process of having a renewed mind, brothers and sisters, that Dr. Lombard, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. You see, my friend, before you give in to those seductions, before you give in to those attacks, before you give in to those temptations from the enemy, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. In other words, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, and all that he did for me. When, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I meditate about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he did for me, think about it. He was born of a virgin just for you and for me. He was lied on and talked about just for you uh, and for me. He was betrayed and beaten just for you uh, and for me. He was denied and demeaned uh, just for you uh, and for me. He was spit on and mocked, stripped and teased, uh, pushed and shoved. Uh, he was abused and misused uh, just for you and for me. The Bible says he left his mighty throne in glory to come down the earth to give to you and I redemption story. All my brothers and sisters, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ and all that he did for you and all that he did for me. Think about it. He brought salvation just for you and for me. He brought redemption just for you and for me. He brought sanctification and justification and regeneration just for you and for me. He loved us. He saved us. He lived for us. He died for us. Uh, he redeemed us. Uh, that's why the Bible said, let the redeemer of the Lord uh, say so. And even though he was fully God, think about that, even though he was fully God, he became fully man uh, and gave his life for you, for you, and for you, and for me. Think about it. We were on our way to hell. We were on our way to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 because of our sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that sin, the wages of sin is death. We were on our way to hell to live in hell forever. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have uh, everlasting life. He, even though he was fully God, uh, he became fully man uh, and gave his life just for you and for me. How can you not want to win for him? Look what he did for you. Look what he did for you. Think about it. If you was on your way to back, back to school after the chapel and you was walking across the highway and wasn't watching where you was going and a car was about to come, a truck was about to come, and one of your classmates pulled you out of the ark of danger just in the nick of time, you would be forever grateful to that classmate. Well, that's what God did for us. Jesus pulled us from the pit of hell. Why should you not want to live for him? Why should you not want to stand for him? Why should you not want to be victorious for him? Why should you not want to be faithful for him? That's why when I think, when I think, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, when my mind is renewed and I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul shouts, hallelujah. My soul shouts, praise the Lord. My soul shouts, thank you, Lord. But then there's another reason why it's important to have a renewed mind. Not only does a renewed mind help you think about your Christ, but secondly, brothers and sisters, a renewed mind should help you think about your choices. Not only your Christ, 
But a renewed mind should help you think about your choices. Look at verse 7 of, he, of uh, Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says, But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Don't miss this. Jesus made himself of no reputation, but taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Why is it important to have a renewed mind? Number one, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. But secondly, a renewed mind should help you think about your choices. Think about this. Jesus did not allow that kind of his heavenly reputation. He did not allow his heavenly position to affect his earthly responsibilities. Let me say that again. Jesus did not allow his heavenly position or his heavenly reputation to affect his earthly responsibility. The Bible says he made himself of no reputation. He stripped himself of his heavenly reputation. He, ladies and gentlemen, in other words, even though he was a king, he chose to become a bond servant. Uh, 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 Robbie, even though he was fully God, he chose to become a fully man. Even though he was deity, he decided to die. Even though he was God the Son, every choice he made, he made to please uh, God the Father. And that's why we must, ladies and gentlemen, have the mind of Christ. Uh, that's why Paul said, let this mind be in you which was also in uh, Christ Jesus. Because even though we are born again, even though we are saved, uh, even though we are redeemed, uh, even though we are renewed, uh, even though we have the freedom to make all the choices we want to make in life, we must be sure that all of our choices please our Heavenly Father. The great thing about God, God allows us to make any choice we want to make. Nobody has a gun in their head that God said, you need to do this, you need to do that. You need not do it. Nobody has a, a, a gun. No, God did not put a, a gun to anybody's head and make you do right. God loves us so much, he gives us choices. He allows you to make choices in your life. So how do we make those choices? Well, it's good to know that when Jesus lived, every choice he made, he made it with his father in mind. There was even one time when his mom Mary would say, uh, they realized out a wedding reception and, and the wine ran out. And, 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 and Jesus looked at the, uh, Mary looked at Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, the wine is out. Just, what that got to do with me? That, that, this is not my time yet. My father has not released me to do that. Every decision he made, he made with his fathers in mind. That's what Jesus did. That's how Jesus lived. And brothers and sisters, if your choices are supposed to please God, then I think you need to know about God, what God says about your choices. If your choices are supposed to please God, then we should know what God says about our choices. In other words, we must know God's word. It needs to be in our head, it needs to be in our hand, and it needs to be in our heart. For God says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God says in Proverbs, I mean Psalm 37 and 3, trust in the Lord and do good, and so thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You should know what God's word says about your choices. Psalms 37 and 4 say, Delight thyself also in the Lord, uh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's all about choices. Psalms 37 and 5 say, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, uh, and he shall uh, bring it to pass. Uh, Psalms 118 and 8 say, It is better to trust in Lord and the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's all about choices. I love Deuteronomy 30 and 19 say, God said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. In other words, you got a choice. There's life and death, blessings and curses. But God said, choose life that both you and your children's children shall live. It's all about choices. I just do 26 and 3 say, I'll keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because they trust in the Lord. Psalm 27 and 14 say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Proverbs 4 14 and 12 say, there is a way that seems right unto a man, uh, but the end thereof uh, of the ways of death. Uh, it's all about choices. Joshua 24 and 15, Joshua was hanging out with his partners one day, his homies one day, his dogs one day, and his dog decided to make different choices and different decisions. And Joshua said, listen, brothers, I can't roll with y'all anymore. I can't do those things anymore. Y'all are taking me away from my faith. Y'all are taking me away from my relationship with God. And Joshua told him in Joshua 24 and 15, guys, listen. Listen, go where y'all want to go, see who y'all want to see, do what y'all want to do. But guys, today, choose for yourself this day who you will serve. As for me 
as for me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's all about choices. Romans 12, 1 and 2 say, I beseech you, I beg of you, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about choices because every choice you make in life leads to a consequence. Every choice you make in life, think about it. Every decision, every choice you make in life leads to a consequence. And whatever choice you make, the consequence will either be a blessing or to be a burden. Every choice you make will either be a blessing or be a burden in your life. I was preaching at a church a few weeks ago and I was running kind of late and so I had to put the pedal to the metal and I was going over this uh, this uh, hill so this hill and 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 I, in my mind I, I knew I was running late so I wanted to put the pedal to the metal but then I said well no I better wait till I get off over the other side of this hill and sure enough when I got on the other side of the hill there was a state trooper down the side of it. I said oh Lord thank you that could have been a burden instead of a blessing amen <laughs> every choice you make would either be a blessing or a burden every, because every choice leads to a consequence I can't have heard this story about this guy who was uh, this barber who was cutting this guy's hair, and uh, he saw this kid coming uh, across the street, and he told the customer that he was cutting hair. He said, "Watch this, brother. See that kid coming there? Said, That's the dumbest kid in the world." So what you mean? He said, "Say, watch this. That is the dumbest kid in the world." So the kid came into the barber shop, and, and the kid came up, and, and the barber said, "Come here, young man. Come here." He said, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir." And the barber put two quarters in one hand off the lumber, and he put a dollar in the other hand. Two quarters in one hand, dollar bill in the other hand. He said, young man, which one you want? And the little boy grabbed the two quarters and ran out the store. He said, I told you, that's the dumbest kid in the world. Every week he comes into this barber shop, and every week I, I give him a try. And he always picks the two quarters. That is the dumbest kid in the world. I've never seen a kid dumb like that. So after the guy got his hair cut, he went outside, and he saw the little kid coming from across the street, licking on his ice cream cone, coming out of the ice cream store. And the, and the guy said, hey, kid, come here. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, uh, young man, uh, the barber tell me that you come to this store, past this barber shop every week. He said, yes, sir, licking on his ice cream cone. He said, and he said, every time you come in here, he said, he puts two quarters in one hand and a dollar bill in the other hand. He said, yes, sir, that's true. And, and he said, and every time, son, he said, you take the two quarters. He said, yes, sir, that's true. He said, young man, don't you know that a dollar bill is more than two quarters? The boy looked up at the man, he took one more lick on his ice cream cone, and he said, sir, the day I take the dollar, the game is over. It's all about choices. He liked ice cream cones. So I'm saying, I'm going to take these two quarters. Because the day I take the dollar, the game is over. Brothers and sisters, every choice you make leads to a consequence. I wonder if Adam and Eve would have made the same choice if they would have known the consequences. I wonder if Noah would have made the same choice if he would have knew the consequences. I wonder if King David, a man after God's own heart, the apple of God's eye, would have made the same choice. People have known the. I wonder if Judas, one of the hand-picked disciples, would have made the same choice if he knew that because of that choice, a few days later, a few hours later, he would commit suicide. I wonder, ladies and gentlemen, if other characters in the Bible would have made the same choices if they would have known the consequences. But not only those in the scriptures. Let, let's talk about those uh, in, in life today. I wonder if Michael Jackson, who just last week would have been 53 years old, would have made the same charge if he would have known the consequences. I wonder if uh, Tiger Woods would have made the same charges, this, charges. <laughs> the boy haven't won a, a, a golf game since, Rob. Right? Robbie, you could play better than Tiger right now. I, mean, hey, hey, hey. I wonder if he would have made those same charges if he would have known the consequences. I wonder if Lil Wayne, Lil Weezy, would have made the same charges. People would have known the consequences of that. I wonder if R. Kelly would have made that. I wonder if T.I., I wonder if Mystical would have, would have. See, I keep forgetting. I think I'm at home. I wonder uh, if Lindsay Lohan, uh, 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 Paris Hilton, uh, 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 Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. Uh, uh, um, the Kardashian sisters. Uh, I wonder if Amy Winehouse would have made the same choice if she would have known the consequences. But not only those in the Bible. Not only those celebrities and athletes and politicians, what about those of us in this chapel today? Think about some of the choices you've made and some of the consequences of those choices. I wonder if you still would have made some of the same choices 
if you'd have known the consequence of that decision? Would you still have dated that same person? Would you still have went through the prom with that same individual? Would you still have got drunk and got high the night of your prom and, and, and all those things happened that, that to this day you regret? I wonder if you would have made the same choices if, if you'd have known the consequences. Would, would you have still took that first hit on that marijuana cigarette? Would you still have uh, smoked that first crack if you've known the consequences, would you still have, 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 have took a drink from that same alcohol bottle if you had known the consequences? Would, would you still have, 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 have looked at your first pornography site on the internet if you would have known the consequences? Ladies and gentlemen, what if your spouse would, have find, would find out? What if your parents would find out? What if your kids would find out? What if your church would find out? Brothers and sisters, all I'm saying is that the importance of a renewed mind is because it would help you think about the consequences of your choices. We make them every day. And for the next years here at Truett McConnell, you will make a lot of choices. Your mom is not around. Your dad is not around. Your youth pastor is not around. It's just you and your partners and your buddies and your friends, your Bible and your head, your heart and your hand, and your renewed mind. Think about the consequences of your choices. And then finally, I've got to close out. A renewed mind helps you think about your Christ. A renewed mind should help you think about your choices. And then finally, a renewed mind should help you think about your cross. A renewed mind should help you think about your cross. Look at verse 8 of Philippians chapter 2. So I come to a close. And, he be, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross even the death of the cross. I've been pastoring the Franklin Avenue Baptist Church at Canada yesterday uh, for 25 years. This next month, our Lord will give life. It'll be 25 years that I've pastored. Only church I've ever pastored in my life. I was a pastor to uh, Canada. I was a street preacher when I got saved. That's why I, I preach so fast, because when you're on street corner, people are not sitting down like y'all are sitting down. So I had to say it fast and quick, because uh, 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 people are moving in there. And when I got to this church, these people, they, they couldn't even pronounce my name. My name is Luther, and they were calling me, they were calling me Luther, Luther, Lucifer, everything. Yeah, all kind of stuff, man. <laughs> I've been there 25 years. God has blessed our church. We start out with 50 members, man. Pre-Katrina, we had the largest Southern Baptist church in the city of Louisiana. State of Louisiana, we had over 8,000 members. Later named Katrina came, we lost over 4,000 members to the hurricane. And God is uh, blessing us back where we're, we're building again. Uh, we probably would never have what we had before, but thank God, God has blessed us where we are. And I love passing this church. One of the things I like about, for love about, Frank, every first Sunday of the month, every first Sunday of the month, this past Sunday, we have the Lord, we serve the Lord's Supper. We serve Holy Communion. And, and it's, ama it's an amazing sight. If you're ever down in the city of New Orleans, please come sit up. You know, after you see Bourbon Street, come to Franklin Avenue. All right, just come and check us out. And, uh, and, 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 and particularly on first Sunday, and, and it, our sanctuary seats about 2,000 people, and, 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 and I'm there at, 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 the table, at the pulpit, and I take the wafer, and I say, and I, I, I turn to the scripture where Jesus is in the upper room with the disciples, and I say, and he took the bread that before them, and he lifted up to the Father, and, and all 2,000 of us in that service lift up the wafer to heaven. And I say, and he said to, and he asked his Father to bless it. And he broke it and he passed it to those disciples. And I said, let us, this bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Let us all eat together. And all 2,000 of us, we eat together. And I take the cup, which represents his blood. Lift up to heaven, ask his father to bless it. And he took the cup and passed it to his disciples. and said, this wine represents my blood, which shall be broken for you. Drink you all of it and remember to me. And all 2,000 of us drink together. And there's a wall wooden cross on the right side of our pulpit. And I turned to that wooden cross and said, ladies and gentlemen, we, what we just did, we did it because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's a solid moment. It's a, people, some people are crying. Some people are weeping. Because if it had not been for the cross, it would still be in our sins. Ladies and gentlemen, your renewed mind should help you think about your cross. His suffering should help you think about the cross. Uh, his pain, his agony, the nails in his hand, the nails in his feet, the spear in his side should help you think about uh, uh, the cross. Uh, his agonizing death which should help you think about the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised uh, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Ladies and gentlemen, he was, the nails didn't keep him up on the, up on the cross. He decided to die for you uh, and for you uh, and for you and for you and for me. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think about making those choices and those decisions, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. 
help you think about your choices, and help you think about your cross. The Bible says he humbled himself as a man, became obedient to the point of death, even to the debt of the cross. He did what he did for you, for you, and for me. Ladies and gentlemen, a renewed mind should make you walk right. A renewed mind should help you talk right. A renewed mind should help you live right. So brothers and sisters, as I go to my seat, I beg you on this second day of this spiritual emphasis week, I plead with you, I beseech you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you can think about your Christ, you can think about your choices, and you can think about your cross. Father, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight right now.